What's up y'all, Toya here, and I am back with another video for y'all. Before we get into the video, make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. All right, y'all, it is time to put your thinking caps on, it's time for some self-reflection, and it's time that we take a deep dive into this topic, which is probably a difficult topic to talk about. Who is to blame for the current state of the gig economy? Who are the players that have caused an impact to gradually have us transition into what we know today? Now, am I saying the gig economy is falling apart? Is it flourishing? Honestly, that's up for you to decide. And it depends on how you want to operate in the gig scene. Now, if you've been around for a bit, you know exactly how I work. And if you're new, well, welcome, first of all. I pick up gigs here and there as time allows, but even in my limited time of doing this type of work, I've seen so many different perspectives from various people pointing the blame on others, saying that they're the reason that the gig economy is in the state that it's in right now. Well, there are only three players in this game, and that's gonna be the company, the drivers, and the customers. And personally, I feel like they all share the blame in some way. So let's talk about it. So starting off with the first culprit, that's going to be the company. Now, I think most people can agree that a lot of these apps, their peak was during the pandemic. People were scared to go outside. They didn't want to risk getting sick. So they rely very, very heavily on a lot of delivery services, food delivery, grocery delivery, retail delivery, you name it. Anything that could be delivered, well, they ordered it to their doorstep. But over time, over the last year or two, their profits have most definitely been dropping. With the cost of everything going up, a lot of people are seeing that these services are just unnecessary, so they stop using them. And as a result, profits have been down. Now, I went over an article last year and it was discussing how some of the founders of a lot of these delivery apps, they're going from billionaire status to millionaire status. And not to poke fun of anyone losing out on money, you know, loss of money is loss of money, but it's still kind of hard to sympathize with people who are doing probably a thousand times better than most regular folk are. So while they may not necessarily be profiting at least on the same level as they were in the past, you know, I think they're doing okay. You know, I don't know what the numbers are looking like, you know, but they're still in business, clearly. You know, if they're in the red, hey, they're in the red, but clearly there's still enough demand to keep them afloat, at least for now, right? Now, in the event of profit loss, most companies have to go ahead and make some changes. So they might raise prices in some areas and they might cut costs in others. And unfortunately with these apps, the cuts, they're gonna come at the expense of the drivers. And unfortunately, we've gotten to the point where we have seen base pay for a lot of apps just continually get lowered and lowered and lowered. Now, the expectation across the board is that most companies should do right by their employees and with the cost of living going up, they should at least be able to raise the compensation so people can keep up with the cost of living. But unfortunately, the reality of that is, well, it's not gonna happen. It's it doesn't happen. Since we're talking about independent contractors and not employees, there really isn't any regulation that says, hey, these people have to go ahead and get paid this amount at least so they can go ahead and do this, this, and this, or whatever, right? Now, yes, there have been some areas across the country where some things are being done, but across the board federally, there really isn't anything protecting the workers. And on top of that, these companies, they're doing a pretty good job of keeping the spotlight off of them. There's a lot of drivers and a lot of customers that have been going back and forth for some time. And obviously it's not really making things any better. So yeah, the companies, they're pretty much in control over everything. Besides the pay, they control how the apps work. They control who gets on the platform, who gets kicked off. They pretty much control everything. But like I said, that expectation and reality, they ain't gonna do nothing. They're not gonna do nothing. So let's go ahead and talk about the drivers, okay? Now, I feel like drivers can be divided up into a few different categories. Now you have those individuals who pretty much just take advantage of the platforms. They exploit it, they use bots, they buy accounts, steal accounts whatever you name it right you know they cause a whole nother issue and you know they can just stay over there on the sidelines okay you know just like how we talked about the companies and how they want to make as much profit for themselves you know as drivers there's a lot of people that pretty much do the same thing you know you're exploiting a system and you know it's hard out here for people I get it you know we're trying to get money by any means but I'm not gonna go ahead and do it at the expense of anybody else so yeah if you're taking food out of somebody else's mouth just so you can have more to eat Nah, 
So y'all folks, if y'all participate in any of that, y'all y'all stay over there. Like I said, y'all causing a whole different issue, right? Now, the other types of drivers out here, you have a lot of individuals who unfortunately fall into a lot of traps. A lot of these apps will try to entice you. They'll go ahead and put up all these incentives or, you know, their acceptance rate. If you get it up to this, you know, you'll get priority and you'll get this and you'll get that. And I feel like we've all fallen into that trap. You know, I'm pretty sure I've fallen into some pretty bad incentives on Spark. And, you know, sometimes you can try to justify it and be like, well, you know, I did this and this and this. But at the end of the day, most of these incentives and most of these advertisements for a priority or top this, top that, it's just a way to reel you in. It's a way to get those low paying orders completed because anybody in their right mind is not going to go ahead and take a two or three dollar payout to drive 10 miles. That just doesn't make any type of sense at all. So like I said, you have people that fall into these traps. They feel like they have no other choice. They're like, well, I got to get to this money. I got to do this. I got to do it by any means necessary, right? But here's the thing. I'm going to plug my own video here real quick. So about a little bit over a week ago, I did a video. I was talking about some apps that can help you get guaranteed money. And I highly suggest that you check it out. Unfortunately, there still are a lot of people out here that don't know about various apps. And I'm pretty sure there's apps that I don't even know about, right? That's why I'm always constantly trying to elevate myself, find other apps, find other ways to make more money in less time. Because I'm trying to enjoy life, right? I don't want to just be working every single hour of the day. And while some of these apps may or may not be in your market, you know, a lot of this stuff is market-based, there are still things that you can do to better your situation, right? You know, drivers have a lot more power than they might think. You know, a couple months ago, there was that strike. You know, I don't really know how effective that was, to be honest. But for me personally, I feel like the best way to strike would be to not accept those low-paying offers. You know, if you see an offer that's paying you less than your ideal pay to mileage ratio, why would you take it? There's no reason for you to take that force the companies to go ahead and raise the pay because the best way you can hurt a company is by hitting them in their pockets. So if you're not taking these orders and they're sitting and they're sitting and they're sitting, they have no choice but to raise them. And then, you know, maybe somebody can go ahead and pick it up. And in the end, you know, that customer, they may not have the best experience and they may decide to not use that platform anymore. So that's less money in their pocket in the future. And it's just like a domino effect. Like I said, drivers, you have a lot more power than you think. And I understand, like I mentioned before, you know, some people might be taking pretty much everything that they can get their hands on because, you know, I know times are hard. Times are hard. But do whatever you can to take your power back. Don't let these apps run you. You know, we have that expectation for these companies to actually do right by us and pay us reasonable compensation. But unfortunately, the reality of that is, you know, they just don't care to do that. So make them do it. And if you can't, move on to something else. You are worth so much more than two or three dollars find something that's worth it and you know just do the best that you can and last but not least the customers who i am going to try not to spend too much time on this you know unfortunately the disrespect and the entitlements of some of these customers it's who it is exhausting <laughs> Literally, it is exhausting. You know, I feel like I've heard just about every single excuse in the book at this point when it comes to tipping. You know, tipping is optional. It's not mandatory. If you don't like it, get a better job. It's not my job to pay your wages. I tip after service. I'll only tip if you go above and beyond. I can't afford to tip. I've heard just about everything you can think of, honestly. A lot of these services are luxuries, and I'm always gonna stand by that. Any type of delivery service that brings something to your doorstep that you can technically go out and get it yourself, that's a luxury. So your food orders, your grocery orders, those retail orders, all of those orders, you could get up and get it yourself. It is a luxury. If you go back however many years ago, this was not a thing. You had to get up, you had to go get your stuff. Sure, there were a few local restaurants that did do delivery, but you couldn't go ahead and get McDonald's delivered to your doorstep. That was not a thing. That was not a thing. Unfortunately, I feel like technology has made people so, so, so lazy and disconnected from reality. And honestly, people People are just losing that human element because here's the thing tip culture sucks i don't agree with tip culture at all you know it has gotten completely out of hand companies are exploiting tip culture more than ever and you know they're just using it as an excuse to not have to pay workers fairly right however if you are using a service that you know does not pay its workers fairly 
and you still continue to use that service without a care in the world, that is extremely selfish of you. You know, people will say, well, why are you working for a company that doesn't pay you? Well, why are you using a service where, you know, people rely on the tips and then get defensive when people are upset when you don't tip? You know, the math is not mathing. What's funny is that these people will go ahead and spend so much money on a service that they don't need, but they'll go ahead and boycott Starbucks or Target or whatever. You know, they'll go ahead and boycott these companies for whatever reason, a uh, religious reason, whatever type of view they have on something. And they're like, oh no, I don't want to support that I'm not going to go ahead and give money to this place because of this and this. But you know that this company exploits their workers. They don't pay well. And you're like, well, I pay for the service. I pay for this. You know, I should still get my food. I should still get this. That is not how that works. I had posted a short the other week and it was hilarious. Like how many negative comments I had got on that video. I took a short from a video I had posted like a month or so ago. And all it was, was me saying that people would be willing to pay a 10% price increase on the services for whatever company, let's just say is food delivery or whatever, right? If the company rolls their price is 10%, they would still be willing to pay that because they want the service, but they wouldn't give that same 10% to a driver as a tip just because it's a tip. I don't understand why people get so triggered about the word tip, a three letter word and people get so triggered by it. The thing is what goes over so many people's heads is it's not about the monetary value of the tip. It's about the respect. You're having a person bring you, a complete stranger, bring you something to your doorstep. And I understand fees are crazy. You're paying probably $15 more for a sandwich that you would normally pick up for 10 if you actually went to the store yourself. But listen, that's on you for paying those prices, okay? If you wanted to save money because people say, well, I can't afford to tip, blah, 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 whatever. If you really couldn't afford to tip, you would have just gotten up, went to that restaurant yourself and picked up your sandwich for the $10 instead of paying 20, close to $30 for that same sandwich. That doesn't make any sense. When people say, I can't afford to do it, then why are you using the service? Make it make sense. All it is, it's about respect. Why would you ask somebody to go out and do you a favor for free, for free? Yes, you're paying all these fees. You're paying all of this to the company and the company should be paying the driver, but guess what? They are not paying the driver. So yes, these individuals do have to rely on tips. And for whatever reason, whether they're doing this type of work because they can't find another job, they're doing it because they prefer the freedom or they're doing it as a side gig, which a lot of people do. You know, I hate seeing people saying, well, you know, people need to go and actually learn some skills, you know, and actually go ahead and do a job that's actually important and blah, 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 blah. Do you know how many people with college degrees that are doing gig work? I'm one of them. I am in my field, technically. I am in my field. But yes, I go ahead and choose to do gig work just to go ahead and get a few extra dollars. You know, maybe I want to pay off something. Maybe I just want to have a few extra dollars for savings, you know, whatever the reason. But that doesn't make anybody less than a person or less deserving of respect just because they decided to do that type of work for whatever reason. That's all it is. It's all about respect. And speaking of respect, I'm gonna wrap it up with this. We talked about expectations and reality, right? You know, just like how some people say, well, they shouldn't expect a tip. And you're right, they shouldn't expect a tip. You're absolutely right. But here's the thing. Don't expect somebody to provide great service or go above and beyond for you because why would a random stranger give you that level of respect when you can't even show respect to that person? And that's reality right there. So with that being said, all of these groups that I mentioned, the company, the drivers, and the customers, all of these actions, they're all contributing factors to how things operate in the gig economy. Now, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this particular topic. Now, out of every group that I mentioned, who do you think has the biggest impact in the gig economy? Or do they all collectively share the blame like I mentioned? Let me know in the comments. Now, before I go, I have to remind you guys to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you do not miss a video. But I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna catch you guys on the next one. And as always, stay safe out there and keep grinding.